because we're working where the, the spinal nerves are in the spinal cord is uh, we have to make sure that the spinal cord is, is healthy throughout the case. And what we do is we actually monitor its function throughout the case. And we do that looking at it a couple ways. Um, we actually set it up, uh, start setting it up while you're in the recovery, not, I'm sorry, in the holding area. So you'll actually start having some leads put on before you even come back. Uh, and then after your sleep, we, uh, Trey puts in the rest of the leads and uh, monitors uh, throughout the case and uh, lets me know every step of the way that everything is good. So con continuous uh, conversation. The, the uh, motors look good, the spine looks good. I, mean, I will not work until I hear his voice. So um, let me turn it over to Trey and he can tell you how that process works. Okay. see this real good. I'll pass some of this around here in a second. Um, but I'm Trey. I'm with Neuromonitoring. I'm just part of the team that's in there. Just kind of adds a layer of safety for you while you're in there. Um, basically what I'm going to be doing is monitoring the spine. There's two basic pathways that we'll be monitoring. The sensory pathway um, is like when you feel cold, hot, things like that. It travels up your spine, up your arm, your spine, and travels up to the brain. So we monitor that pathway and then we also monitor the other pathway, which is the motor portion, that's how you walk, how you grip things. It actually, we start here to stimulate and it travels through your spine all the way down to like your foot. So we're monitoring this pathway that goes all the way down while he's operating here. And then we're monitoring the other pathway that goes up this way. And um, what Dr. Macon said, we're giving him feedback during the whole case while he's in there um, doing the operation, just conversing, letting him know that um, everything is going the way that he wants it um, when he puts the instrumentation in. And I'm sure Dr. Makin's already showed you this. This is actually the pictures that he gave us. Um, these are the instrumentation that goes in. Um, we do a lot of different types of surgeries. Um, and I'll kind of let you pass this around. This is the actual screen that we're looking at. Um, that's kind of what we're looking at the whole time. It's a screen full of a, a lot of information. Here's the sensory one, um, this SSCPs, and this, that's EMG, and then here's a, a motor that we use. This is the one that helps you walk, grip, things like that. So we're constantly doing that. Every time Dr. Macon puts in a, a piece of instrumentation or any, anything that's done, Dr. Macon is very good about um, asking us to and stimulate it and conversing with us. Um, like I said, we're, we're basically in there for safety. We're, our concentration is on you, um, trying to make sure that your, your spine is, is doing everything that Dr. Macon wants it to do. Um, so a lot of you have already had it because I recognize you. So let me just go ahead and tell you a little bit about some of the other stuff. Most of you will come in to see us before the surgery. You'll come in and do uh, pre-op baseline is what we call it. Um, you'll either see me or one of my colleagues. We're all part of the same team and all part of the team in, in surgery. Um, we use a little bit of an electrical stimulus. Um, kind of feels like I'm, I'm thumping on your wrist or your ankle. You can talk to some of the ladies that are here and ask them how it feels. Um, I just did one the other day and the, the young lady fell asleep during it. So um, it, it's not too bad, but it is a little electrical stimulus. Um, once you go to sleep after anesthesia uh, has, has performed everything they need to do and we've got you good, safe, and asleep, we do use a few needles. Um, they're very small, very tiny. They go in specific places. Um, specific muscles, different things like that. And we'll place that after you're asleep. Before you're asleep, we put on these little sticky electrodes on your wrist most of the time. Um, very sticky, very sticky. Um, we'll put them there on your wrist and we kind of put some little tape there. That'll stimulate that sensory pathway. But all the other stuff we'll put on pretty much after you're asleep. Okay. you have any questions? It's not required for all of the patients to go through pre-neuros? Depends on the age. Um, sometimes really young where they're unable to tolerate it. Um, oh, okay. yeah, if they're very, very young, um, we'll try it, but most of the time you, you put a little sticky electrode on them when they're very, very young, they want to play with it you know, and stick in other places. So it does exactly work well for them. So, love comes when we do that different. 
it's um, it's helpful in a baseline. It's yeah. not uh, absolutely mandatory. We um, assume with a lot of these uh, kids, uh, a lot of them had MRIs, um, certainly normal neurologic exams. So we expect that the baselines are going to get normal. Um, what Trey is reading off of is it, it's seldom that the the um, potentials disappear. What happens is they change. And uh, that's actually fortunate because that means that, uh, well, if they've changed, it means that they, if it, in that rare occasion where that does happen, it means I can back off and almost always they come back. So he needs to have sort of the baseline to be able to judge and it helps if we've had preoperative baselines um, from before the surgery and then he has the ones from the very morning of the surgery and then he has that's what we're working. So we don't absolutely have to have, to have the baselines, although it's, it's obviously a good piece of data. It's very helpful to us and to the neurologist that's reading. Um, yeah, I mean, anybody that we can do it on, we want to get it done. Yeah. Um, Again, it's not mandatory, though uh, we've been surprised by um, by baselines of people that we thought were had normal, and it uh, turns out that their baselines were not normal, um, and that made a big difference when it came time to see what we saw on the day of surgery. If we hadn't had, had the baselines, it would have been an issue. Hearing talking, I've seen a lot of doc not all doctors do baselines. Um, okay. I mean, I, I yeah. think it's important to yeah. lower the bases. We, um, uh, you know, not to stand on the soapbox too much about wake men, but one of the things we're lucky about is we have an in-house um, uh, neuromonitoring, neurophysiology program at wake men. There's a little bit of a tendency to, to do that uh, sort of commercially. There are um, <coughs> systems you can get um, where they just come in on day of surgery, they do the monitoring, and they don't really have an investment in how they leave. Um, again, it's, it's uh, better, the more you know a patient going into a situation like this, especially a complex thing, the better off. And so, as I said, it's one of the great things about this hospital that we have Trey in house. We have um, uh, Dr. Santos, who's not here right now, so we, have, we have basically the whole neuromonitoring program. And that's the big difference. When you say baselines, you're talking about response times? <coughs> response times. Yeah. What specifically? I'll let the expert tell you. <laughs> it is response times. Yeah. This is exactly what it looks like. That's from the leg. When you come in for a baseline, that's the exact picture we'll be looking for. All those different waveforms. Stimulates at the ankle. Um, and we record at the head, and so those are the baselines that we're getting. Or, time to, to yes, ma'am. It's basically latency or time, a little bit of speed. Um, we do calculate some velocity or speed. Okay. Um, so we're getting a baseline of what, how fast it is before the surgery, and during the whole surgery, we want to make sure that doesn't change and gets slower, okay. or that those waveforms that you see there, we want to make sure they don't get smaller either. Right. So, okay. that's the and you can pass that around if you like.